welcome, filthy motherfuckers. After a long gap from pornography to now, I finally review their 2008 release, Cradle of Filth, Godspeed on the Devil's Thunder. If you've been keeping up with um, my discography reviews, then you know that I didn't have the highest of opinions for pornography, much like many of uh, Cradle of Filth fans. But here it is in 2008, and once again another lineup change. They have Martin on drums now, and uh, they also have got Paul Allender back at the helm on guitars. Um, a few session vocalists, I believe, and other than that, Oh, James McIlroy doesn't play on it here, so it's only Paul Allender doing the majority of the guitar work. This is a concept album about a man named Jules DeRay, who was a knight that fought beside Joan of Arc, but who um, is, well, who was in the 1400s, he was a notorious child murderer. Yeah, perfect uh, territory for Cradle of Filth. This is um, has some of their darker subject matter, but they don't. They do a good job of writing the lyrics, and they're not such. It's not supposed to be extreme in your face gore. With this, it just is more elegantly written. Um, it has a lot of occult references as well. But, um, like I said, again, it's a concept album. My feeling about this album is... It's kind of a return to form album after Thornography, but at the same time, it can get a little repetitive. Um, you know, case in point, a lot of times they rely on sort of a verse-chorus-verse type of formulaic framework for the songs in this album but at the same time one thing I really love is that they have the very thick keyboard presence back that very epic symphonic feel to it again a darker creepier feel to it than they've had in a while um, a very occult atmosphere a very dark atmosphere for this album the riffs are kind of still those thrashy Paul Allender riffs that he's known for as well as a lot of um, melodic type of things and some even some uh, black metal leanings again so that's about as all the drum work um, by Martin is absolutely ferocious he uses a lot of blast beats it sounds almost tribal sometimes it's very savage um, so how about we do a track by track the intro in grandeur and frankincense devilment stirs once again Decent intro. Not much to say. Number two, Shat Out of Hell. I, I always I always get a little bit of a chuckle when I say that, but that's a kind of a thrashy song. One of the uh, a very furious opener. Kind of uh, tells you what you're going to be getting into. Uh, summarizes the introduction to the story here. And then it goes right into my favorite song off of this release, The Death of Love. This is an example of really classic Cradle of Filth. This the album's masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. A lot of melodic guitar work. The female vocals um, trading off with Danny in the chorus is very, very well done. The guitars are very well done. The lyrics are superb. Number four, the 13th Caesar, one of the um, catchier songs on this release and one of the... Um, songs it's a case in point of why I said that it can get a little repetitive and and um, monotone not really the right word um, but it can drag on a little bit it can get a bit formulaic it's a good song and it's a catchy song but at the same time it seems sometimes like they they just hammer that chorus into your head especially towards the end of it I feel like the chorus it just 
over the 13th Caesar. It's like, okay, we, we, get, we got it. Then, um, number five, Tifoge, which is, um, another little instrumental. I love the quote here, the narration, God can deny nothing to a deranged, should he ever, there's always the devil. Which, which, let me just interject here, Doug Bradley, again, does a lot of narration on this. He does the, um, narration of Jules Duray, and it's, uh, this one thing I love about this album is the little narrations that usually can come in at the beginning of a track or towards the end of a track. Then, um, six, Tragic Kingdom, which is, again, one of my favorites off of this album. Um, it has really that one of their, or some of the hallmarks of their classic sound. Um, a lot of tremolo, a lot of fast playing, a lot of melodic, it's soaked in keyboards and atmosphere. At the same time, it, it has those riffs, those Paul Allender riffs, and it can get a little bit um, repetitive once again. Number seven is basically, um, if I read it correctly, it's about when he starts to conjure the devil. So, okay, the story up to this point, since I haven't really been, as far as I can read in the lyrics wise, the story up to this point is Joan of Arc gets burnt at the stake and this drives him pretty much crazy. Um, he starts his downward spiral into occult studies and eventually to begin murdering children and sacrificing them to this demon named Baron, which is where Sweetest Maleficia, track number seven, picks up with. I conjure you, Baron, Satan, Beelzebub, by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That whole narration. Um, I don't know about this song. This song is just kind of there for me. It's good. I like the story and the lyrics of it, but the music of it doesn't captivate me so much. Um, and then we go to number eight, Honey and Sulfur, which starts out with this choir chanting various Latin phrases, or Latin words, which I haven't bothered to um, look up. So this seems to be more tell telling the story about him, black magic, and murdering children, and, you know, different things like that. Number nine, Midnight Shadows, Crawl to Dark and Council with Life, one of my favorite songs, an epic nine minute track that's just really creepy and brooding, and just that little keyboard, uh, silent keyboard part, do, 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 or however it goes. It's just really creepy, but at the same time has some more, a little bit of black metal influence right on the fringes of it, you can hear it. And then from there, we get to Darkness Incarnate, which is uh, kind of where Jules DeRay starts to unravel. You know, he, um, if I get the gist of the lyrics of what it's saying, is that he is basically hallucinating that the ghosts of these dead children are, are just coming back for revenge and he's just going mad with guilt and with just he's just being torn apart by his inner demons and maybe some actual demons too. Eleven Ten Leagues Beneath Contempt is once again seems like it's uh, where he gets caught. It's where he has his court trial and then Twelve Godspeed on the Devil's Thunder is basically him being burnt at the stake. 13 Corpse Flower is a little outro just to kind of sum it all up. Again, like I said, the sound on this album is would be akin to Dusk and Her Embrace mixed with their more modern sound. Thrashy, riffy, but at the same time those keyboards are back in full force. Um, sometimes there's a few tremolo riffs here and there. Um, sometimes there's choir vocals in it. It has a very, very, um, it does have a pretty medieval sound to it, which kind of fits with the atmosphere of, um, what is the subject matter. 
it is talking about the time period in which the subject matter takes place. The only problem I have with it is it can get repetitive. It can get just droning. Um, some of the tracks seem to bleed into one another, which is good for a concept album, but bad when the fact where you just feel like you don't want to finish the track. You'd rather for the track to be over, let's get on with it. And that happens to me a few times during the course of this album. You'll find songs which there are sections of it which you really love and sections of it which drone on particularly in some of the repetitive riffs and particularly in some of the formulaic song structures. What I mean by formulaic is it follows a formula either verse chorus, verse chorus or has a certain refrain section or a repeated riff over and over. Overall this is a very good album though. It's a vast improvement over Thornography. If I had to give it a score, which I'm going to, it would be probably seven seventy six out of a hundred. Well, fuck it, eighty out of a hundred. The more I listen to it the past uh, week or so, the more I've enjoyed it. So eighty out of a hundred. Um, not their best, not their worst by far. But that's about as uh, best of a review as I can give you for it. Hope you uh, enjoy it. Peace, motherfuckers.